What's going on all my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. We are here to help you pass your NCLEX and nursing school exams like a boss. And today we're gonna to be continuing on with our lab value series and we're gonna be discussing glomerular filtration rates, also known as GFR. Let's get our nurse on. So you hear glomerular filtration rate and you're like, wow, that's a tongue twister and what the heck do I need to know about that? Well, what GFR measures is the level of kidney function to help determine the stage of kidney disease. So the value is the percentage of kidney function. So additional determination criteria when it comes to this particular um, lab value will of course include age, gender, and race. And obviously the lower the value, the worsening of the kidney function. So a normal range for our GFR is going to be between 90 to 120 milliliters per minute. So I wanted to give you a quick look at what the table looks like when it comes to the stages of chronic kidney disease as it relates to GFR. So in stage one, we could have kidney damage with normal kidney function. So that's gonna be that 90 or higher range, so 90 to 100%. In stage two, we could have kidney damage with mild loss of kidney function between 89 to 60, 89 to 60%. Stage 3A would be mild to moderate loss of kidney function, 59 to 45. Stage 3B would be moderate to severe loss of kidney function, 44 to 30. We get to stage 4, we have that severe loss of kidney function, 29 to 15. And once we get to stage 5, we're in complete kidney failure, and usually the value is going to be less than 15. So when it comes to the pathophysiology of the GFR, we know that blood is filtered by the glomerulus. So glomeruli are the first part of the filtration process. So as you can see, we have blood coming in through the efferent arterial into the glomerular capillaries. From here in our Bozeman's cap capsule, we have filtration, reabsorption, secretion, and excretion taking place. So if we have glomerular damage, the waste products are unable to be filtered by that glomerulus, right? So you're gonna have a decrease in glomerular filtration and an increase in waste product buildup in the blood. So when we're trying to obtain GFR labs, we can do it one of two ways. Again, we can use um, serum blood, which we would use either the green, lavender, or red top tubes, or we can collect it through the creatinine clearance process. So again, this particular test tests creatinine in the blood and it compares serum results um, of creatinine to the urine results of creatinine. It's a 24 hour process of collection of urine on ice. So if you've never done this process before, you're gonna have a bucket, it's gonna be full of ice, and you're just going to keep these orange buckets that you're storing the urine in on ice constantly. So your job primarily is to make sure the urine goes in the orange buckets and to make sure that um, bucket that it's sitting in is always full of ice. So how the procedure works is, say the patient urinates at 12 o'clock, 12 p.m., say you're going to discard that first urine. We don't want that first urine. From that 12 o'clock period, that is when the timer begins. So every time that patient urinates from 12 p.m. to 12 p.m. the next day, you're going to place those urine um, samples into these big orange jugs. And once you get to the end of that 24 hour period, these jugs will be sent to the lab so that they can do further testing to see what's happening with the um, kidney function via the urine. So when it comes to GFR, you're not gonna really see an elevated GFR very often. Um, that would mean that the value is gonna be greater than 120 and it's usually not a cause for alarm. Some of the, one of the causes that could occur if we have an elevated GFR is there might be albumin present in the urine, which usually indicates that there's some kind of damage occurring to the kidneys. So more times than not, you're going to see a decreased GFR. That's how we know that we have something going on with our kidneys. So with kidney disease, we're going to see damage to those glomeruli, right? And when we have that long-term kidney disease, we're going to see a more decreased GFR rates when it comes to our chronic kidney disease patients. When it comes to our diabetics, we know that diabetes can ultimately damage multiple organ systems when it's not treated appropriately, including the kidneys. So almost all patients with type 1 diabetes develop some evidence of functional changes um, with their kidneys, 
within the first two years of their diagnosis. And then approximately 30 to 40% are gonna progress to more serious kidney disease issues within that 10 to 30 year period after diagnosis. And then lastly, we have hypertension. So when it comes to our glomerular filtration, we know that it occurs due to that pressure gradient in the glomerulus. So if we have increased blood volume and increased blood pressure, we're going to see an increase in GFR, right? So we're gonna have a constriction of the afferent arterioles that are going to the glomerulus, and we're going to have a dilation of the efferent arterioles coming out of the glomerulus, thus decreasing our GFR rates. I hope that this video was helpful in helping pass your arterial blood gas, nursing school exams, as well as your NCLEX, like a boss. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe here to my YouTube and hit that notification bell so that way you're informed every time I post a new video. You can also follow me on my social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram and make sure that you check out my website at www.nursechung.com. There I'm going to have NCLEX style questions, resources, handouts, everything you need to pass those exams like a boss. But until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.